Deepak says Apple's chips are way ahead of the competition, but they ask top dollar for their iPhones, and they do. But uh, we'll actually talk about top dollar. That's actually a great segue. We're going to talk about top dollar because right now we're going to talk about the Snapdragon 875. <laughs> so you want to talk about top dollar. I heard that they are going to start pricing this and see it's it's a perfect segue so deepak thank you it was like it was timed and it was planned uh this article from gsm arena says the snapdragon 875 will reportedly support 100 watt fast charging cost dearly cost dearly a key selling point of the snapdragon 875 will be its support for 100 watt fast charging says leakster digital chat station this will be the marketed this will be marketed as a perk for gaming phones with large batteries as it will reduce the downtime between gaming sessions. Qualcomm is expected to introduce the 875 in December and to have it ready for i for iPhones and to have it ready for phones in quarter 1 of next year. So for the next Galaxy whatever they call it, S21, S30, whatever they call it. Uh, that's probably going to be the first phone I'm assuming that's going to have this 875. The chip is reportedly already being mass produced by TSMC on a 5 nil nanometer node. It may use the new Cortex X1 as its prime core, plus three Cortex A77 for the big cores. In the meantime, the company is expected to release a Snapdragon 865 Plus next month. So this 865 Plus is supposed to be an overclocked version of the current Snapdragon 865. It will increase its prime core to 3.09 gigahertz, quite a boost compared to the 2.84 gigahertz clock speed of the current S865 chips. I think the first phone that they're talking about that's going to use this 865 plus is going to be the note 20 or at least the rumor uh that we've been hearing and some companies may want to use that one instead as rumor has it that the snapdragon 875 will be significantly more expensive than its already pricey predecessor when they say significantly more it just makes me think how much higher can we go when it comes to phones is one thousand dollars for a phone not enough. I mean, $1,400 for an S20 Ultra is already ridiculous, but uh, the full package, including the hardware needed for wireless connectivity, will cost $250, up from $150 to $160 for the Snap 865. The chip alone will go for $130 versus $80 for the 865. Supporting 100 watt probably adds to the cost as well, but Qualcomm is not the only company working on that. Currently, several other companies are working on charging speeds in that range. Xiaomi did a demonstration last year, Vivo T's 120 watt super flash charge. Samsung announced a 100 watt USB uh, power delivery chip of its own. How fast would a 100 watt fast charger charge, like say a 4,000 milliamp hour battery? Like 20 minutes, 15 minutes? Is that what they're talking about when they're talking about 100 watt charging? That's ridiculously fast. but. I will always have to ask, how is that going to affect its uh, overall battery life on a phone? You would think that something that charges a phone that fast would start to deteriorate one of these batteries unless they've figured something else out. But anyway, yeah, Snapdragon 875 probably going to be, you know, seen in the next whatever Galaxy flagship that comes up, not the Note 20. The Note 20 will probably have that 865 Plus like I was just talking about, but that 875 will probably have whatever the S30, S21, whatever they call it. But when they say it's going to cost $250 up from $150 to $160 uh, for the Snapdragon 865, does that mean that the next Galaxy flagship phone is going to cost $1,100 now instead of a thousand. Um, does that mean the, the galaxy S 30 ultra or S 21 ultra is going to now cost $1,500. And I, I, it wouldn't surprise me because in my head, I'm like, well, $1,500 is a very round number and it just makes sense to put it there. But, uh, I would not pay 15. Well, <laughs> I, I was about to say, I would not pay $1,500 for a phone, but uh, I keep looking at that Huawei P40 Pro Plus that I still feel like I'm going to drop $1,600 on. So never say never, right?